Hello, in this video I would like to talk to you about our Network Connected Signal Analyzer or NCSA. It's in this uh, little box. The NCSA is, uh, combines three instruments in one. It's an oscilloscope, a spectrum analyzer and a signal generator. I can open it for you and then you can see inside. Here we have the network part, here we have a DSP that does the digitizing of the signal and that also generates the signal that is output here. And over the network it communicates with the PC where we have a nice application that displays the data in an oscilloscope-like format and where you can measure and uh, experiment with uh, Fourier transforms and power spectra, etc. The connection is really simple because the PC application connects or tries to connect automatically. So when you connect, uh, you don't have to do anything really difficult to connect to the uh, signal analyzer. You just start the software and it will look on four IP addresses and if it finds it, it will immediately connect to it. If it doesn't, then this will be orange. In my case, it connects immediately. Once it is connected, you can start playing with uh, the analyzer. The NCSA knows about four networks. It can, the, second, uh, the third digit can be one, zero or two, and here you can have one, two, three or one, two, two. You select the IP address with these two jumpers here. When you launch the application, it will show the, sp the spectrum of a synthetic signal generated by the PC application. But of course we want to measure, so I start measuring and I do this by clicking the auto FFT checkbox and there it goes. There is no input signal, so on the top graph you don't see anything, just noise, digital noise. And on the bottom graph you see the spectrum of the digital noise. If you stop the conversion, like this, you can see here in tabular form the values of the signal that you sampled. And as you can see, it are really small values. So it is a very sensitive device. If you look at the spectrum here, you can see that there is some spurious signal, apparently, because we are not measuring anything. Uh, clicking on the peak, it will display the frequency and the value at that position. So here we have a peak at 90 kilohertz. Here we have one at 67. There is one at 120. So this looks like some harmonics of a of a signal uh, that's somewhere in the neighborhood, maybe the power supply. Um, with the PC software we can also generate a signal and then measure it. So we can inject the signal into our circuit under test and then measure the result and display it on the PC. So I switch the signal generator on, I select the frequency, it's now uh, 1 kilohertz and it's a sinusoid. I start the conversion and there we see in the upper graph our sign of one kilohertz and in the lower graph we have the spectrum but because it's, it's only one kilohertz the peak is very close to zero. And here we have a nice feature because there is zooming in the graph so you can zoom the graph if I manage to, there we go, and now we have the peak here so a better view of our signal. Uh, measuring the signal that the NCSA outputs is possible thanks to the loopback jumper, which is here. In this position it is in loopback mode, and when I set it to the other position it was, will use the probe. But to get out of zoom mode you can click this little button here. There you are, back to the normal uh, view. We can change the frequency of our signal and uh, make it uh, 100 kilohertz, for instance. Add two zeros. And there we are. It should be possible to zoom in here. As you can see, we can make the input signal visible. Our samples at 100 kilohertz. 
I can scroll, scroll through the signal, but it's not really interesting because it's just a sign. One of the ideas of this software was to allow experimenting with Fourier transforms. So this is why here in this uh, area you can select uh, windows for FFT. So now there is no windowing. A windowing, applying a window to the input data allows you to um, suppress edge effects when you sample data of non uh, uh, block of non-continuous data at the edges you will have um, incorrect values and you applying a window will soften these effects. So there are several types of windows you can use and you can see if you se uh, select one it has for instance in this area if we look at around 100 kilohertz now it's quite open if I select the Parson window it gets filled so you can experiment with uh, the Fourier transform and to make this even easier there is also a th what we call a synthetic signal generator which is inside the PC software and that injects so you can use the software without the uh, signal analyzer hardware and still play with the Fourier software. So an interesting uh, thing that I mentioned earlier is this uh, setup where I don't measure anything, no input signal connected, and where we have some peaks in the spectrum. And what I discovered is that these are actually due to the power supply. So I have a small USB phone charger powering the NCSA, and if I power it directly from my PC, for this I have to close the software first, because otherwise it will not connect. So I unpower the NCSA and I connect it to a USB port on my PC. I relaunch the software. There we go, we see that the peaks have disappeared. There's only one peak left. It must be some noise source in the neighborhood of our system. Okay. As you can see, this is really sensitive. Okay, a little bit about the hardware of the Network Connected uh, Signal Analyzer, the NCSA. It's a very simple design, actually. It's nothing uh, ultra fancy. Here we have a DSPIC33 doing the analog digital conversions. All the magic is actually done in software. You have to, if you do the calculations right, then the um, quality is really good. Uh, here we have the network interface, right to there. These jumpers determine the um, IP address of our board. So there are four IP addresses possible. Here we have the programming connector for the DSPIC uh, processor. The software is all open source and uh, so you can modify the software if you like. And here's a debug connector. It's a serial port connector uh, compatible with an FTDI cable. The power supply comes through a USB uh, mini uh, connector. It's regulated by two high quality, low noise, low dropout uh, linear regulators. So not to, in to introduce as little noise as possible. There are two BNC connectors here. One is the input connector for um, your probe, and one is the output connector uh, for the uh, signal generator. In between there is a jumper, which selects loopback mode or normal mode. In loopback mode, the output of the signal generator is looped directly into the input, and so you can exercise the hardware without measuring, uh, connecting to any real uh, electronics. Okay, so now that you know everything about our network connected signal analyzer, I am sure that you are convinced that this is a very useful investment for you, for an addition to your lab. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy this video, and uh, please like us on uh, YouTube, on Electro TV. Goodbye.